All right, so we are back outside of the mini door today, and I've got a little bit of a surprise for you. I believe I mentioned this a little while ago, and, uh, well, it's going to say in the title what it is, too. But I've got a little bit of a surprise. I put something up, which is pretty cool. So we're going to use this overhead door touching go remote and see what we got. Well, for your viewing pleasure today, we have the overhead door Automate model 70Z-1 installed on the mini door. So, been wanting to do this for a while and I finally, finally did it and made use of this short rail that I built. So sit back and relax. This one's probably going to be a long one. Got a lot to say about this unit. Um, I think I've got a couple other videos of it, but uh, this one is from the mid-1960s. This one is the oldest machine I have. There was also a brown version of this one, and I'm pretty sure that one was the older version. I've been told all this stuff. I just don't remember all of it. So anyways, yes, this is the short rail. So the original rail for this is quite literally just two inch door track and that is also well that's exactly what we have going on here it's the same principle uh the only piece that i really reused was the trolley i wasn't about to try to <laughs> make my own trolley for this but i reused their trolley but the rest of it i built myself it's basically you know the same principle as its original rail is that you know you've got the pulley up front and a little chain support in the middle here along with a uh, spacer bracket to keep the tracks apart so um it's i mean it, it actually does work pretty well i i'm not gonna lie i did not i didn't expect this rail to really work that well but this thing runs perfectly so uh, when I installed this, the way I installed it, the way I had to install it was a little bit interesting. Um, what I had to do was get the rail bolted onto the opener. There's just four bolts. And then what I had to do, I did not use the LiftMaster header bracket. That header bracket is too small, way too small. So this is the original header bracket to it. And I've just got this long bolt. We've got a couple chamberlain belt drive idler pulleys that the chain goes around and uh basically i've just got some nuts in there to keep this bolt in place so it acts like you know acts like a cotter not a cotter pin whatever that pin is whatever it's called for the header bracket so i had to get the rail i put the tracks on slid the trolley on then I installed the header bracket and bolted this up. And when I do that, then yet at the same time I installed this front pulley. And then I had to install the chain. So, a little bit of a different process to have to install it. This chain is the same chain that I use for Chamberlain's. I did have to bunch it up in a couple spots so that I could tighten it enough. <coughs> So, next I had to set the limits. Oh, the other thing. So, this arm is not the original arm. This is actually a commercial arm. Uh, it is a drop-off arm, so if I pull this chain here, this arm will fall off and hit you in the face. I'm not going to do that right now because I don't want to try to reconnect it one-handed, but this is a commercial arm. The original arm, um, the bolts or the holes for the bolts are too small. I don't have bolts small enough to fit in it, so I had to use this arm, which it works perfectly fine. I do. Ha I just do have it offset, though, because it's a little too thick to fit in my door bracket. <coughs> Sorry, I am a little bit sick, too. Uh, but then I had to set the limits, and the limits are all... They're inside this green box here, and it sets pretty much like a commercial opener, and I got the limits on this thing perfected without ever plugging in the machine. 
really all you <coughs> sorry guys really all you need to do is you turn the flywheel and or the pulley until the door gets to where you want it and then you just slowly turn the little cams in there until you hear the click on the micro switch and I mean that just perfected the limits so this does come pretty close I probably could have made this rail a little bit longer but well I mean the back hangs are angled back quite far as you can tell but yeah so I had to set limits and then I had to wire the thing up and install radios uh, this is the first time I've really actually used these terminals up here, but this is the receiver I'm using. It's not the original receiver. It is aftermarket. Um, I'm trying to think. I It would have been analog for sure. I don't think it would have been the shoe shape remotes. No, it wouldn't have. It would have been... I'm pretty sure the remote would have been... Wait, no, it wouldn't have even been an overhead door set because of the motor here. It would have come with a... To electron radio but uh, the outer two terminals are the push button wires I believe uh, let's see s is common P is power I guess I'm not really sure I don't actually know what this middle terminal is for but I have for the receiver I've got the black wire is common I've got that on the middle terminal and then blue and red I think red is power and blue is relay. Those are on the third, the right terminal. I uh, was able to get that wired up thanks to a video from Garage Door Geek. Um, so you can use one of these three wire receivers with two terminals, um, which you know I had to do. So I'm not quite sure what that middle terminal does, but anyways. Um, so there's your motor in there. It's a little. It's just a quarter horsepower motor, but it's really all you need. And then V-belt drive. Uh, this is the only reduction there is in the machine. It is it, It's a really, really simple machine, which is why it's so reliable. Because, you know, they're not trying to put cameras in it and then trying to sell you a video keypad and giving it all this fancy Wi-Fi features. They're making it do what it's supposed to do. Open and shut a garage door. <coughs> uh, let's see what else. The force is adjusted with this little wing nut right here. And it's pretty cool how the force works. If a door hits something, um, <coughs> if the door hits something, this chain up here gets really tight and it puts pressure on this plate. That this sprocket up here is attached to and that comes down uh, it hits this little micro switch and there's also a little thing that will trigger the down limit in this which stops the motor so that's one of the reasons I really like old openers is just seeing I mean I mean I, I know I've got a lot of new stuff but pretty much all the stuff that's down under here there's a couple exceptions but pretty much all that's down here the internals are pretty much exactly the same. What I like about older machines, you know, you've got obviously this one, and you've got these genies, you've got the automatic doorman, you got Stanley's, the Flight Star, uh, what else? The, the Muromatic, and, you know, that Sears, that Sears, and even the GX9000 over there. All of those openers are different in how they work, which is... I mean, that's one of the things I like about old machines. It's just really cool seeing the designs that they come up with for four systems and limits and whatnot. Because, I mean, there are some cool stuff as far as new openers go, but they all work the same way now. So, I do definitely like older machines better. So, yeah, but that's the overhead door automate. Uh, it's called... Automate, the model number is 70Z-1. And, I mean, the other thing, the internals, it's just... Really, the weak spots on this would be the relays can go bad. You know, that happens after a while. The capacitor could blow, which, you know, that's a pretty easy fix. And really, 
realistically, as far as the all the drive components go, the belt is really the only weak spot, which this belt is actually a brand new belt. Um, I don't remember exactly the exact story, but when I went to pick this up, the guy said that, I can't remember if the belt broke or if it was dry rotting or failing or something, but the guy said he replaced the belt, and in the process of doing that, the limits got all messed up, and he decided that it just wasn't worth it, so he sold the machine. Um, so, I mean, I guess that's kind of nice, got a brand new belt, but... I mean, realistically, this is just such a heavy-duty machine. This is back when they knew how to build openers. There's no gears to strip out. No plastic. There's no plastic parts in the. Well, I guess you know, other than the pulleys, but you can easily re you could easily replace those with a new plastic pulley. But there's really not. This is pretty much all metal, so. But yeah, I guess I mean that's really. All there is to say about this um, and the light has stayed on the entire time that I've been talking uh, it's governed by the relay so <coughs> as soon as the relay switches to open the light turns on and as soon as it switches to closed it turns off so even how the light works is really simple so anyway that's the overhead door 70z-1 uh, my battery is at 2%, so I need to head out, but I'll throw in a clip at the end of running this.